So now we are ready to start talking about the last class of lipids, which are steroids. This section, 19.8, is on cholesterol, which is um, very uh, tied together with, with steroids. Let's start by looking at the general structure of a steroid, because we haven't looked at a steroid in a long time. So we're not going to talk in this section about what steroids are biologically, what they do inside of our body. Instead, we're just going to look at the steroid as sort of like a functional group. What does it look like? All steroids have this same general structure, four fused rings, fused meaning that they're stuck together, and they have various substituents or branches attached to them. And the different branches that are attached to the steroids, what makes um, testosterone versus estrogen versus progesterone, etc. So they, they all have the same general structure, and then the different branches make different steroids. Steroids are, are made in our body from cholesterol. So cholesterol is the starting material for a steroid. Now I'm actually going to draw the structure of cholesterol for you so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, it is also having the four fused rings together. Um, cholesterol is a specific molecule. It's not a type of molecule. So it has very specific branching or substituents on the molecule like that. So there is its structure. And again, this is the starting material inside of our body. It's our starting, starting molecule or starting material for steroids. The word steroid has, you know, in America, it has pretty negative connotation, but it's just another way of saying hormone. So cholesterol is, is essential inside of our body because we need it to make the hormones that we need to stay alive. So, uh, cholesterol is synthesized in our body. It is made in our liver. And also we consume some of it in our diet. Most of the cholesterol that we consume in our diet is coming from our intake of meat and dairy. But a lot of people don't know that for the average person, a typical person, about 75% of the cholesterol in their body comes from your liver. So it is naturally made. About 75% of your cholesterol has nothing to do with your diet at all. And only about 25% comes from diet. And of course that, you know, that's going to vary. Different people have different diet, different intake. They, they are, they're going to have maybe a higher percentage of cholesterol coming from their diet. But a lot of people who have high cholesterol, if it's something that is genetic or biological, it's because their liver is producing too much cholesterol. That's not something that they can fix by changing their diet. And they can, we do have drugs called statins. This is a class of drug. Statins are drugs that slow down the production of cholesterol in our liver. And so that would be the drug, the type of drug that could be used for somebody who has a, a liver that just naturally produces too much steroid. Uh, or excuse me, produces too much cholesterol. What's the problem with producing too much cholesterol? Um, well, cholesterol, as you know, that is found in our blood. If we have too much of it, leads to clogged arteries. Which can lead to a heart attack. 
or stroke. Uh, I should make make a note in here, not having cholesterol in your blood too much. Because we all have cholesterol in our blood. That's where it's supposed to be. We're supposed to have cholesterol in our blood and we're supposed to have cholesterol in our tissues. Inside of our body, we have these molecules called lipoproteins. And lipoproteins are like little Uber drivers for cholesterol. Their job is to move cholesterol around inside of our body. There are two different types of lipoproteins, and I'm sure all of you or most of you have heard of these different types of lipoproteins. We usually refer to them by their abbreviated names, LDL and HDL. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. And HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. And the LDL and the HDL are commonly, like everyday language, referred to as bad and good cholesterol. So when you go get your cholesterol levels checked, they're checking the ratios of the low-density lipoproteins to the high-density lipoproteins. And having uh, too much LDL is associated with unhealthy um, clogged arteries, a uh, higher likelihood for heart attack and stroke. Having a, a low amount of LDL relative to HDL is good. It seems that leads to a lower risk of heart attack and stroke. So let's talk about what the difference is between the low density and the high density. The low density protein, lipoprotein, its job is to move cholesterol. This is the bad, bad lipoprotein. This will move cholesterol away from the liver to various parts of your body, just to different tissues around in your body. And as it's moving the cholesterol, its, its goal is to um, bring cholesterol to be used inside cell membranes. So it's trying to, it's trying to be helpful and help build cell membranes. But if we have too much cholesterol, either because we're getting too much from our diet or because our liver is synthesizing too much cholesterol, these LDLs get loaded up with cholesterol molecules. They, they basically pick up more cholesterol than your body. So they end up with extra cholesterol. And this extra, or excess cholesterol, just gets dropped off along the way. Just kind of gets randomly dropped off. And it, this, it gets dropped off in our arteries, which leads to clogged arteries. So this is kind of like, you know, maybe you're packing snacks to go on a trip and you just pack way too many snacks in your backpack and it's just entirely too heavy. And so as you're walking down the trail, you just start getting rid of your snacks and dropping them on the trail and throwing them out. And um, that's, you know, that's bad. That's not a good thing. And those extra, those extra cho cholesterols that are being dropped off in the arteries, they're not in a location in your body where your body can do anything with them. So they just sit there not being used. And that leads to thinning of, of the inside of our arteries. 
the high density lipoproteins, the good cholesterol, this moves cholesterol in the other direction. So this guy comes along and picks cholesterol up and takes it to the liver. So this moves cholesterol away from, or I shouldn't even say that, it moves cholesterol to the liver from our tissues, from our arteries, from anywhere that it isn't being used. So this is like a little vacuum cleaner. As it moves through the arteries, if it comes across an extra random cholesterol that's been dropped off by an LDL, it will pick it up. So it cleans our arteries and our blood of the excess cholesterol. And so it's logical that um, these get the names good and bad and their relative amounts are related to our health because if we have a lot of this bad LDL, that ultimately means that we're going to get a lot of dropped off cholesterol in random places inside of our body, which isn't good. If we have a lot of this good HDL cholesterol, that means that we've got a lot of little vacuum cleaners inside our body that can help pick up the extra cholesterol and prevent our arteries from getting clogged up. Let's look at a picture. This is from your textbook, figure 19.8 a picture of the difference between HDL and LDL. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that these are these are spheres, they're balls, but this has been cut into a cross section. Uh, and on here, what we have is a single lipid layer. So we've got phospholipids, and there's your little tails, but it's just one layer. It's not a bilayer like a cell wall. And then these little things that kind of look like honeycombs, these are cholesterol molecules. So they just kind of get picked up. Some of them are stuck, embedded in the membrane of the HDL or the LDL. Some of them are sucked all the way in, into the HDL or LDL. And inside here, inside the middle, is just an ooey gooey mess of just oiliness and greasiness. And looking at them, the relative, comparing the two together, you can see that the HDL has got a lot more proteins in it than the LDL. You can also see, I've kind of like really marked it up a lot here, but you can also see that the high density HDL lipoprotein has got more cholesterol, or maybe it's even the exact same amount of cholesterol, but because it has a smaller volume, the cholesterols are packed together more tightly. Like they're just um, kind of all really crammed in there. Whereas the LDL has more empty space, lower density.